Uh, well, I worked in coffee for uh, about 10 years before I started this, and I had no roasting experience. It was all farm house, management, training, all that kind of stuff. Honestly, it was just the flexibility in choosing what we want to serve. Ethical sourcing is a huge part of it. Paying good prices is a huge part of it. Um, but yeah, I worked in coffee since I was about 15, uh, 14, uh, in awesome. Seattle, and then Santa Fe, and then New York. Um, and no roast experience, decided to open up a roastery. That's great. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a philosophy, more of a practical approach, which sure. is work with importers that I know will pay good prices, not just to the producer, but to the makers and stuff like that. And there's only a few, I would say, um, and you know, asking for the information um, about what prices they pay, uh, at, you know, not to the exporter, but to the producer. Which not everybody will give you, but some will. Sure. Um, and then they'll give it to you in a price that doesn't really make sense, like uh, pesos per carga, like volume. Uh, so being able to, um, you know, ask them to make that make sense for you. But as we started roasting coffee, we, if anything, for a logistic little simplicity, we've narrowed our focus to basically Colombia, Guatemala, Kenya, Ethiopia, cool. Honduras, and simply because if there's a little more transparency in some of those places, totally. the price to quality ratio is a lot higher than elsewhere. And that's like the one thing I learned first is like 99% of copies, 99.8% of copies you can cut out immediately because there's some, some something wrong with it. Like it's agey or it's fermenty or all sorts of like things that can go wrong with coffee. Sure. Um, and then after that, um, something that a little more fruit forward, like an interesting characteristic, um, sweet, uh, clean, which is basically there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and then we roast it to highlight the fruit balance. So we're pretty light, but I wouldn't say we're like on the super light side of the spectrum. Um, we try to have the best acidity, a little more balanced, uh, more sweetness. Picking a coffee that's like, you know, clean is sure. the first and the hardest part. I think. Getting started, you know, I had no business experience, so sure. I wrote a, I wrote a business plan and uh, I showed it to a friend who's an entrepreneur and he tore it up and said it was terrible. So I had to rewrite another 60-page one, learn how to make projections, projections, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I had to ask 15 different institutions for financing. Uh, it just took a long time. It took two years to open. Uh, and then on the roasting side. Um, learning to cut very well yeah. took a while, especially sample roasts, that kind of thing. Sure. Um, uh, I thought I had a pretty good palate when I was doing barista training and uh, yeah. all that kind of stuff, but um, and mine's not even that great. Like my our, our roaster John, who does some roasting, is a great palate. Yeah. And it's just something that we just have to constantly yeah. keep doing and doing. And doing. Totally. And yeah. then uh, people management is the last part. That was. Well, distinguishing yourself, there's a lot of roasters these days. That's the, that's the hard part. Uh, roasting well, light roast, light roasting coffee well is very hard. Sure. Um, the oh, window is yeah. extremely small. Um, it's too light, it's sour and vegetable. We don't particularly like roasty flavors in our coffee, so um, we don't like it roasty, so we can't go too far that side. Sure. Uh, if anything, we'll edge a little bit more developed roasty. If there's a we can't really find the sweet spot if it takes us a little bit of time. Um, but light roasting coffee well is hard. Distinguishing yourself from other roasters is hard. Um, uh, finding, you know, inventory control of green coffee is very hard since we buy seasonally. We can't buy too much, we can't buy too little. Um, if we buy too little, the prices go up. If we buy too much, it gets agey. And since we light roast coffee, it, you can tell. Yeah. Fecco. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. A well made Fecco. It's like well extracted. Yeah. Um, that's the best, I think. Cool. Yeah. That or um, if I had to pick two, I would say Cappuccino. Cappuccino, man. The Ethiopia work of Saqqara is probably the nicest Ethiopian coffee we've bought in a long time. It's okay. extremely good. Yeah. It's very good. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, like really floral and fruity, but not too bright. Big body, yeah, it's really good. Great. Yeah. What would be 
your biggest piece of advice for somebody interested in taking amateur roasting into a profession? Making it a business? Yeah. Like, know your market and be good. Who are you selling to? Um, don't roast too light. Don't underdevelop the coffee. Sure. Have fun. It's going to be really hard, but have fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be harder than you think it's going to be. Yeah. Van about like times a thousand, but sure. still have fun and try to remember why you did it in the first place. Yeah. It's easy to forget that.